Maranatha! <laughs> How often do you hear that as a greeting? In biblical prophecy today, as well as in prophecy research and development, we want to take a feature and bring to you the Word of God as it's revealed in prophecy, revealing Jesus, in a way that we can look at the articles that have happened throughout the week and maybe recently in time and possibly take a second look at them and maybe coordinate some of the scriptures that maybe didn't get said or maybe have a bigger discussion about what's going on with that particular article, whatever it may be. Some of the features that we'll have, you know, we'll look at uh, Bible prophecy today, now the end is here, uh, a lot of the features that you'll find on the internet, because that's what I'm based on, is I'm an internet-based ministry that I've been a Christian for a long time, you know, I mean, I grew up in the Jesus movement, so a lot of times people say, well, you know, what are your credentials? I say, well, I know Jesus. How's that? <laughs> I ask him, and he tells me. If those aren't credentials enough, okay. But seriously, though, a lot of times in reviewing things, people want to find someone that's very exciting or dynamic, or they want to find someone with all the gifts of the Holy Spirit, or they want to find someone that tickles their ears. But in prophecy research and development, as well as biblical prophecy today, we want to take a prophecy review, a Thessalonian type look at a uh, those that were more excellent that they examined the Word of God to prove whatsoever things were true and daily search the scriptures in order to apply them if it fit. So in prophecy review, I'm not you know here to you know apologize for some of the things that are done in ministry by men of God that may be in the big sphere of influence when it comes to prophecy, but rather I'm here to share with people who genuinely want to know, is Jesus coming? When is he coming? Is he coming soon? Will he be here in our generation? What should we do to prepare for his coming? And to not be misled by anything or anyone that would take them away from the grace of God that's been given to us. So in Prophecy Review, we're not trying to, you know, really slam anyone, you know, by what they're doing and, you know, in their ministry and how they, you know, choose to serve the Lord. But rather, we're choosing to examine what the articles that they write are saying or what the information they're conveying, what we need to do a little more research on and maybe develop the thought a little more. So these prophecy reviews will be under the... Prophecy Research and Development banner, and then will be featured in Biblical Prophecy today as a regular piece, because I think that the biggest mistake we make is to say, no man knows the day or the hour, so since you can't know, you don't want to know the times or the seasons, and you know, just who cares, because nobody knows and nobody shares, and everybody's arguing about it, and there's really, frankly, no reason to get all excited. Well... Like I started to say about my credentials, what got people saved in the Jesus movement was Jesus is coming. That was the banner, the byword, and everybody looked forward to it. Everybody was excited. Everybody knew that Jesus was coming. As a matter of fact, they look at the times and they said, oh, he could come tonight. And we have not lost our fervor. If you examine any of those who have come from the Jesus movement that were of that type of salvation that was given to us that was so overwhelming that we were just so filled by the gifts and the power and the magnificence of the Holy Spirit that we balanced it with the Word of God that we know we are the last generation. This was the last revival. It was the time when the last great movement of God would be accomplished because Israel had become a nation. And when you look at what happens in the church, and you look at what happens in Israel, they happen side by side. Look at 1967 when Jerusalem became a nation, and look and see what happened in Christendom at the same time. Look when Israel became a nation, when Jerusalem became the capital of the nation of Israel. But look back in 48 and 47, even right before Israel became a nation. Look back, let's say, at the turn of the century when the First World Congress of Zionists were gathered together and the proclamation went forth in order to 
build the nation Israel. And they used the same song, the same flag, the same statements of what went on in the Zionist Council as the state of Israel. So when was Israel really born? And what should we use as a timetable? A lot of these questions are what we do in prophecy research and development. Because we don't want to look at someone's idea and say they're wrong, but we want to say how does that apply if we could incorporate it into the big picture of all that God is doing. And that's what you'll see in Prophecy Review. We will examine how two people could be saying the same thing at opposite ends of the timeline and still be accurate. How so? Because this man may be focused in on just the end of the tribulation period. This man may be focused in on just the perspective of the pre-tribulation period. This woman of God may only have an appreciation of what the suffering is of Rachel weeping for her children for they are no more. So she only understands what's going on in Jerusalem at the time of the suffering. So how does that incorporate into the big picture? How can we make that applicable to the complete Word of God? Why do we have from Genesis all the way through to Revelation a complete Bible? Because a lot of times when you get into prophecy, you only get into little pieces, but you got to put the whole picture together and the puzzle comes out perfect. So Prophecy Review, we will do that. We will look at it in Prophecy Research and Development and post it in Biblical Prophecy Today. Those things weekly that we see and we say, hey, look, this was a good thing. This was good. Yeah, this was not so good. Yeah, this was political. Yeah, but the politics fit for this circumstance. No, America's not in prophecy, but America looks a lot like the Roman Empire at times. So when we look at ourselves as a mirror, we could see something that portrays itself like the Roman Empire that's happening in Europe. Or we look at Israel, and we look at Jerusalem, and we see that, is the temple going to be built, or will it be the tabernacle of God? Ooh, could it be that the sacrifices could be stopped that were going on before the temple was completed? All these things are meant to whet your appetite, to cause you to think because Prophecy Review is about that. It's not about taking in faith what somebody is telling you. It's causing you to think about it. And if I could get any way to shape or form to just grab you by the shoulders and say, think about this. What do you think? What do you think? Think on these things. If there be anything, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, if there be any, I was going to say the whole scripture, but I just went blank because I was thinking of prophecy and I was getting excited about Jesus coming. But whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are holy, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, then think on these things. Well, likewise, in prophecy, there are things you need to think on. Jesus is coming. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. It's not about getting legalistic. It's not about being graciistic. It's not about being theistic. It's about being realistic. We live in the last days. Prophecy review once a week. I'll meet with you. We'll talk about it. Because that's one of the subjects that I cut my teeth on when I got saved. And you know what? I still find it fascinating that people today, you know, now that I think about it, Lord, you said, you were talking about your credentials. I go, credentials. Okay, so who am I? Why can I share these things? You know, because I have a Satan Kirby Bible? Oh, no, throw that one away. Because I have, you know, uh, Zola Levitt? You know, because I, I listen to Hebrew for Christians? No, oh, because I've been to Jerusalem? No, because I've got THDs or anything else? No because I used to go to the Bible studies at Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, with Chuck Missler on Monday nights. I think it was Monday nights. Pretty sure it was Monday nights. Or Thursday, no, it was Thursday nights. Monday nights. Oh, or we had these prophecy studies that were going on in depth with Chuck Smith on Thursday nights. Oh, or that we had Yes of Spirit going on on Wednesday nights. Oh, or we had all these other things going on. No. No. Because I think. Because you think. Because our faith is intelligent. Because you see, Chuck Missler especially, but all these men of God that I mentioned and a lot that I didn't mention, all want you to think about it. They want you to have intelligent faith. Faith is not just the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. It is based upon a fact. Your faith is always factual because it comes from the Word of God and the Word of God is fact. It is truth. 
So it's based on fact. So there is a physiology, if you wanted to call it that, or a I'm trying to think of the science of physics. There we go. There is a spiritual physics to what we are doing when we say you have intelligent faith. It is meaning that it's based upon something other than just a feeling or some hyperbole that you just cast out there and say, I think it works, and there's nothing to connect it to anything, but it's just ethereal out there in the nether world. That's not prophecy. Prophecy is the exact science. Exact. Very precise. We will review that. And praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Anathema Maranatha, but more than that, Jesus is coming again in your generation, and you will be blessed.